This week in Parliament, Justin Greening confirmed her plan to increase the number of grammar schools in the country. The Education Secretary believes that selective grammar schools can play a role in the education system, but does not want to see a return to the past of the 11 plus exams. Theresa May had agreed that the government should build a new wave of inclusive grammar schools with a 21st century approach giving equal opportunity to students of all backgrounds. We need to basically look at every child that, that's having an education in this country. There's, there's ways of scaffolding children up so that they can be the best of their highest uh, the highest ability um, academically. They can get up there. They're, they all come from different starting points, but everybody can be more academically challenged and make more progress. We can't just improve comprehensive education without forgetting about grammar schools. I think that um, there is an argument to say that if we take the higher ability out of the equation, put them in grammar schools, we've got more time and money to invest in the, 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 the rest, if you like. A private education or a grammar education would put you in a better place long term, yes. The Education Secretary questioned a concern over returning to the old system where schools separate children into winners and losers, successes or failures. Labour, however, opposed this view by stating that it will be the children that can afford tuition fees that will get ahead and the disadvantage that will be left behind. This begs the question, is it possible for a child from a working class family to excel in a grammar school? Or do children have their futures mapped out according to their postcode? With parents paying higher fees for exams, uniform and travel in grammar schools, it is still a political debate as to whether grammar schools can be inclusive. Jem O'Reilly, Keys News, Live at Five.